everyone, welcome to this month's Q&A. So once again, great questions. I'm gonna try and get through these uh, and I hope they help you and others uh, find the solutions you're looking for. So first question, currently I provide a disk of images. Uh, just so the question is, a determined couple is gonna be able to upsize those images and impact my ability to get post sales, right? So you're giving your clients those digital negatives, even if you're downsizing them, there's technology out there from like uh, alien skin blow up, uh, on one's perfect size. So there's all these technologies out there allowing them to upsize images. Hey, I got news for you. I've taken pictures on my iPhone and I've blown them up to 16 by 24 uh, acrylics uh, using this technology. So uh, it's just gonna become more and more pervasive, I think, uh, in the marketplace so that the consumer can take this. So how do you circumvent that? How do you, how do you ensure that they're not able to take advantage of that? Um, Barbara, you don't. The problem is clients are gonna figure out how to steal from us. Uh, that's it at the end of the day. Uh, the, the harder we try, the more companies are gonna come out there and give them tools uh, to accomplish it. So the only way I know to uh, ensure that this doesn't happen, I guess it's still gonna happen, is to ensure I'm charging enough for my work. So at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, I know that even if they attempt to go and print those images by upsizing or whatever other tools are out there, uh, maybe they just don't care about quality. I'm never gonna convince them to care about quality. I hope that I've gotten the right client who's looking for that quality, but for the ones I don't, I know that ultimately I've been paid the minimum I need to ensure I'm profitable on a job. So rather than trying to find a way to tr you know, deal with the issue in handcuffing them or preventing, fr preventing them from upsizing the images, you've gotta get that do those dollars in the, the form of sales. So we will not uh, hand over those digital images until after they write booked us for a certain amount of money. So I, I hope that makes sense, but I, I don't think we're ever gonna stop it. I think it's gonna become easier and easier, and who knows, eventually they're probably gonna create an app for your iPhone to upsize the image. Uh, it, it's just ne never ending at this point. Next question comes to us from Rebecca. What are some tips uh, for having enough confidence in my work to set and ask for the prices I'm worth? You know, Rebecca, this is a great question. I think photographers all over the world struggle with confidence. They never feel like they're worth uh, what they're trying to charge. It's just like, you know, either I want everybody to, to, to love me, I want, you know, they're searching for this acceptance. Uh, at the end of the day, I don't care if anybody likes me. I, I'm trying to run a business. And so, yes, I want to be loved, I want to be appreciated, but I don't want to be broke. And the desire to not be broke has to be greater than worrying about uh, that confidence issue. So you've got to push yourself and think about your bills. Think about it from a business perspective, not think about it from a personal perspective, right? So when you say something like what I'm worth, that statement to me becomes very personal. That statement to me screams, right? Confidence. And, and you're acknowledging that. See, I don't want to look at it that way. I don't want to think about what am I worth. That personalizes it. What do I have to charge to be successful? What do I have to charge for my business to be profitable? If you start thinking about it that way, Suddenly you take that personal element out of it. So I hope that helps. Next question comes to us from Barbara. Uh, I subscribe to two online listings that provide a lead list each month, but honestly, I don't know how to use them effectively other than offering discounts. Can you comment on how to use lead lists uh, effectively? You know, Barbara, this is a good question. My first gut on this is to offer a discount, right? Or maybe like a free engagement session, something to that effect. And so what I don't think there's anything wrong with that. That to me would be the way to get them in the door. But if you don't want a discount, uh, those services, what about going at it from the, the perspective of creating a how-to list, right? An informational database, so to speak. So you get these leads, you get these 10 names, 20 names, 100 names, doesn't matter how many names. Uh, let's assume we're talking weddings for a second. Start producing a monthly newsletter that's top five tips for better wedding photos, top five tips for better wedding um, floral arrangements, table arrangements. Do you see where I'm going with this? Now you become the expert and now guess what? You start partnering with florists. You start partnering with caterers. You start partnering with people and your newsletter's more informational. Now you're developing the brand, you're developing the relationship, you're becoming the trusted advisor and then maybe only once every three months you're running a sale for a portrait session. You're running a sale for uh, a half off engagement session, 48 hour sale, something to that effect. So you haven't just been asking them, you're giving them information, you're educating them, you're becoming the trusted advisor, and now, hey guys, you've been following me for three, four, five months, now I've got something to sell you. People are much more responsive uh, to that kind of sales tactic than the only time you're touching them is when you're asking for something. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, next question comes to us from Lissandro. Moving to a new area and having to reestablish myself, how do you go about doing that? Get ready to start from square one. There's absolutely no way around it. Now I can tell you if you haven't moved yet, uh, something you should consider is just 
going after it in, in parallel. So let's say, let's just take New York and California, for example. If my business is established in California, but I'm moving to New York, what I'm gonna start doing is looking towards 2015 and trying to establish my business in, uh, in New York while I'm still in California. Don't wait. So start doing joint marketing, right? Parallel marketing, reaching out, making vendor connections, maybe going after meetings and things like that. Uh, start doing things in parallel, but there really is no silver bullet. You're not gonna be able to get that business up and running uh, overnight. It's going to take time. I, I, and I'm being honest with you here, we're based in O'Fallon, Illinois. It's a uh, very much small city in the Midwest, right? We're in a suburb of, of St. Louis. I would much rather be in a Chicago. I would much rather be in a New York, but I'm established here. And so I don't want to start from zero. So what I'm doing is I'm starting to push into Chicago. Well, how am I doing that? Slowly but surely, I'm reaching out to planners. I'm reaching out to uh, uh, venues. I'm trying to book engagement sessions. I'm shooting more up in those cities. That's ultimately what I'm, I'm looking to accomplish. And that's going to get me into that market all while protecting my current home base. Next question comes to us from Spencer. How do you maintain your website portfolio? I'm so busy with other tasks, updating the site falls off the radar. Uh, Spencer, I work 18 hours a day, and if you follow me online, which I know you do, uh, you know that I'm always active uh, in, in, that, in that area, just whether it's social, website, uh, it, and the reality of it is, I probably spend 90% of my time working on my business and 10% of my time shooting. And you've gotta get into that mindset that a majority of your time has to be working on business-related ta tasks. So what I would ask is, of all the tasks you do, what can be offloaded from your plate so that you have more time to, to pay attention to your website? And when it comes to updating your website, if we're talking about blog posts and things like that, well, that's part of my normal workflow, right? After a wedding, I'm making sure I grab 10 images, post them up on my, on my blog, and update it that way. If it's in my portfolio, maybe I'm updating the portfolio on my website every six months. I'm kind of behind on that, uh, to be honest with you. But maybe it's every six months, maybe it's uh, you know, quarterly. And just put a reminder on your calendar and spend an hour or two that way. And, and I find that if you don't put it on your calendar as a to-do, it'll actually never get done. It's something else will always creep into, into that you know, must happen. Uh, so you, you've gotta make time, because this, this is your marketing machine. This is how brides are booking you. Uh, next question comes to us from Rachel. How does Sal get leads at bridal shows to sign up right then and there? Well, funny you should ask. I have a bridal show this Sunday and we typically get three to five brides to si sign up at every show and people are always blown away. They're like, uh, I can't do it. No brides want to sign up. Well, why not? They are there looking for a photographer. Why wouldn't they want to sign up right then and there? You have to give them a reason. And the reason we give them is 10% off, right? So get 10% off any package. Think about it, my base package is 4,500, next package 5,500, top package eight grand. You don't wanna save five, 500 to $800? That is a significant savings. Now I know what you might be thinking, well my packages are only $2,000, $200 isn't a motivator. Great, throw in something else. Sign up today, get a free 11 by 16. Sign up today, get a free family session, right? Don't give away something that's gonna impede your ability to make money down the line, but give away something of value uh, that, that will make sense and help them book. So what is the call to action that you can put in place to get someone to book right then and there? That's the part you have to think about. And for me, it's that 10% discount uh, that's gonna get it. Uh, next question comes to us from Todd. How do you make your business succeed and be successful when a full-time job comes into the mix? Well, Todd, you may or may not know my story, but prior to launching Salvatore Sincata Photography, uh, I worked for Microsoft for about uh, 12 years. And in working with Microsoft, uh, that was my last job before I punched out, there was this point in time, maybe for about a year, where I was working 30 to 40 hours a week at Microsoft. Uh, I probably should have been working 40 to 50 there, but I started slipping, uh, and I was working 30 to 40 hours a week on Salvatore Sincata Photography. And so for, a sh for that window, and I think that is short term, I think a year, when you're trying to launch your own business and quit your job, a year is not a long time. Uh, in that short term period, I was working 80, 90, 100 hours a week. I was exhausted, uh, put a lot of stress on me, my family, but ultimately at the end of the day, it was for a better cause. So that's the way you have to think about it. But man, there, there's no easy answer. It is going to be painful. If you're working a full-time job and you wanna to quit to be a full-time photographer, which by the way, is the best job in the world. We get to make great images every day. That's an amazing job. Uh, but the path there isn't always easy. And so you've gotta figure out what are you willing to give up in the short term to get there. That means no personal time, no vacations, no family time. You gotta make sure your family's standing behind you on this and see it as, hey guys, 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sacrifices in this first year so that we have a better life over the next five, ten years. Right? You've got to get your family behind you on this. All right, next question comes to us from uh, Adrian. How can you manage your online presence, come up with new content daily across multiple platforms without posting the same stuff, pictures on each of them, uh, while making time for business tasks and shoots that need editing, especially when you have nothing new to post about? Well, welcome to my life, my man. Uh, about 10% of my time is spent shooting, 90% of my time is spent behind the scenes, uh, you know, uh, marketing, advertising, uh, and all the other business tasks. And, and all too often, as photographers, we, we wanna get out there and shoot, that's all we wanna do. But if, if you're not a full-time photographer right now, I'm sorry if I'm gonna burst your bubble, but full-time photography is not full-time shooting. It doesn't work that way. Instead, I'm always looking for moments when I can shoot. And so, how do I find time to do it? Uh, how do, where, where do I find uh, the new ideas and concepts? Look, if I've got a, a lull in time, I'm making up things to shoot. I'm working with local people who I, I say, hey, I've got this idea, uh, I'm gonna do it for free, right? I don't want it to cost me money, maybe I'm gonna do it in my studio, maybe I'm gonna do it outdoors. I don't wanna lose money on the, on the deal, but I'm shooting and, and maybe they're just conceptual in nature. And you're a commercial photographer, so as a commercial photographer, make the time, make, invest that sweat equity into it, right? Invest your time, and start producing these great images. These images are now used in your marketing materials. These images are helping you network with other vendors that are gonna drive you new business. So in the beginning, you've got to hustle and get out there and, and invest some, some of your own sweat equity uh, into it. All right, next question comes to us from BJ. How do I ask for referrals? Well, BJ, I'm assuming you're talking about how do I ask my existing clients to refer me? Here's the reality. Give them a reason to refer you. I don't ask for referrals. I give them a reason to refer people to me, right? So for example, if you're a wedding client, every new wedding you refer to me, I give you a free 16 by 24 canvas. That's my gift to you for referring. That carries value, right? In our business, off the top of my head, we sell a canvas for three, four, five hundred dollars a la carte, of course. So there's value there when I give my client a free 16 by 24 canvas. They see the value in it and they're more apt to get out there and refer uh, and refer me. So give them a reason to refer. What is your reason? You can't just be word of mouth. You can't just hope that Susie had a great time and gets out there and, and talks about you. I don't want to hope. I can't run my business and grow my business based on hope. I've got to give them a reason, right? A call to action, if you will, to refer me. Uh, next question comes to us from Casey. Where can I advertise outside of Facebook? Fan pages are no longer getting their content seen without paying for them. Very, very true, by the way. Uh, and it's even then too limited as to who is targeted and why. Do you have suggestions on finding more outlets? So Casey, right now in my business, what I'm doing is I'm investing in um, cross-platform social media. Pinterest, Instagram, YouTube, uh, and then of course Facebook. This is the future. And I'm looking at how to create this virility, if you will, in my posts, in my content, so that my customers are helping me share great images that are gonna help me drive business and awareness. Uh, and, and this has been something I've been working on for about six months now. So look for something out of me that talks about how we did it and what the results are. But ultimately, look to Google, Google, Google Ads, things like that, search engine optimization, right? Make sure you're showing up on page one. Uh, make sure you're posting relevant content. Try and become a trusted advisor, but Facebook doesn't have the same impact it does. Uh, now, if you're using paid ads in Facebook, that is showing results. You've just gotta get smart about how you're using those ads because Facebook is actually rejecting ads now if there's too many words, right? So there, there's definitely guidelines that are showing up here on Facebook and how, it, how it's uh, propagating to different people's feeds. So just, be, just keep up with the current trends and it's exhausting. Uh, I'll be the first to admit, it has been exhausting trying to keep up with all this, uh, the change in technology and how it impacts my business. It's like, man, I just want to get out there and shoot, but now I've got to become an expert on social media. I've got to become an expert on SEO, uh, and I've taken that on myself. Last question comes to us from Kristen. I struggle with having the time to research where I can cut costs. I just find a vendor I like and go with it. Uh, I probably save some costs somewhere, or I could probably save some costs somewhere if I did more research. Any advice? Well, Kristen, I like you, I'm all about relationships. And so I find a vendor I like and I stay with them. What I'm not willing to do is be, right, penny wise, pound foolish. And what I mean by that is, yeah, I may save an extra $10 by going someplace else, but then there's no relationship. Then when something goes wrong, that person doesn't know who I am, they're not willing to help me out, right? I mean, let's be honest. 
there's plenty of places to get canvas printed. I can go to Sam's Club up the street and get a canvas for probably half the price I pay at a professional lab. Let's not talk quality for a second, because you're right, quality would be uh, much better at a professional lab. Let's just assume quality is equal. The reality is, I have a relationship with my lab, I don't have a relationship with the, the, the corner store, right? So those are the kind of things, the Sam's Club, those are the kind of things that I'm taking into consideration when I'm developing relationships. So to me, looking to save five or 10 bucks is not nearly as important as developing those relationships and knowing that my partner is gonna stand by me when something goes wrong. That to me is how I make decisions. Hell, it's even how I hire my staff. Sometimes I hire people that maybe aren't the right people for the job, but they're the right people for the organization. I can train them how to be the right person for the job. So anyway, hopefully that makes sense. Ladies, gentlemen, great questions. As always, keep them coming in. I hope you enjoyed this month's Q&A. We'll see you next month.